Okay, Steve. <laughs> are you okay with spiders or are you, are you afraid of them? Maybe you're right up there with Jimmy Fallon, who basically had a panic attack in this picture when he had spiders crawling all over him. Or maybe you're right there crying with Wilbur when you watch Charlotte die in the tragic ending of Charlotte's Web. Whether you love them or hate them, tonight I'm here to speak on behalf of them. Spiders are not deserving of their bad rap, like the long-jawed orb weaver or shamrock orb weaver, which are both here in Montana. Like most spiders, they are a benefit to us, feeding on a bunch of insects that we consider pests. Spiders are also rather timid and rather likely escape than bite. They hardly ever pierce our, our skin with their fangs. Des despised by hikers and hunters alike for turning trails into big spider web obstacles, the golden silk spider is one of our largest and most beautiful orb weavers. Although it's not in Montana, it builds huge one to two meter webs in places like Florida. Its strong and elastic silk is being used to make gloves, parachutes, and cables commercially. Famously known for eating her mate, the black widow is common here. Both males and females have the hourglass on the underside of their abdomen. This is actually the only spider in Montana that could potentially harm us. The hobo spider is not harmful, and we don't have the brown recluse here in Montana. Black widows are actually really timid and reclusive. Wrongfully accused but never proven guilty, the brown recluse pictured here is not found in Montana, despite what you hear in the media and from your neighbors. Also known as the violin spider, its native range is in much of the Midwestern and Southern states. Unfortunately for years, spider bites have been chronically misdiagnosed. Known for causing panic as a home invader, the, spider, the hobo spider was introduced into Montana in the late 80s. It's a big spider, but it's not gonna chase you around the house. <laughs> in fact, nothing in its behavior suggests that it's aggressive or harmful, despite what the internet might tell you. If you decide to let it survive in your home, it'll repay you by eating lots of insects. <laughs> so where does the arachnophobia come from? It's probably from movies and media where the spiders are larger than life, like Aragog and Harry Potter, and the supersized spiders and eight-legged freaks. Cheesy movies like arachnophobia show really unrealistic behavior of spiders. Misdiagnosed bites have always made spiders seem like the bad guys, too. Look at those beautiful eyes. <laughs> Most spiders do have eight. Despite many, many eyes, these spiders don't really see very well and really only use their, their eyes for detecting motion. Since they are mostly active at night, they have many hairs and receptors on their body to taste and feel what is around them. Does size matter when choosing a mate? <laughs> Apparently not with spiders. These orb weavers show how females are typically four to ten times larger than their mates. The tiny males will carefully enter the webs and try to court the females with crazy dance moves or by strumming the web. The males are usually sacrificed. <laughs> These two spiders are very amazing mothers. Both the wolf spider and the cellar spider pictured here can be found in Montana. Those are their egg sacs, and she carries them around for a couple of weeks until they hatch. The maternal care only lasts for a bit, though. As the, as the spiderlings get older, she, she will actually try to eat them. During the fall in Montana, you might be lucky enough to find one of these beautiful cat-faced orb web spiders on your porch. With two cat-like ear projections on her abdomen, she is bright orange and builds huge spiral webs. She traps the flies and moths that would otherwise be coming into your home. The red-spotted ant mimic spider is a master of disguise. Spiders are renowned for their ant mimicry with their ant-like coloration, bodies, and behavior. Birds don't find ants appetizing, so this disguise will help the spiders from becoming bird snacks. If looking under rocks and debris, you might see this ant mimic wandering around, and you might be fooled thinking that it's actually an ant. Even though they don't hunt in packs, wolf spiders are voracious hunters. Smaller ones live freely under rocks and vegetation, but the larger ones dig burrows and venture out at night to devour insects like crickets or beetles. If danger ari arises, they could quickly retreat to their burrows. Unlike most spiders, they need to have really good eyesight to see in the dark. Famous for its long jump, which can be up to 12 times its body size, jumping spiders like this one can be found in Montana. They also have really good vision and can even see colors. Their bright red and green coloration make them some of the most attractive spiders. You can find them hanging out in your window wells with the sunshine, eating flies three to four times their size. Scurrying sideways like a crab, look for the aptly named crab spiders next time you're looking at wildflowers. Some have a habit of perching in flowers and seizing arriving pollinators that are about two to three times their body size. 
Maybe they should also be called the chameleon spiders because they can often change colors to look like the flowers and leaves they're sitting in. I love this beautiful spiny-backed orb weaver. Unfortunately, my favorite spider is not here in Montana. If traveling through Florida or any of the southern states, you can see its spiral webs and shrubs and tree branches and along buildings. Its large crab-like abdomen is a likely way to disguise itself from birds. Looking for a new pet? This is one of my five pet tarantulas, a Chilean rosy hair, tickle toes, that's in my office. Since we don't have them here, you'd have to travel far to the south to see them in the wild. Even though you can't pet them, they really are the best pets ever. They don't really need to eat very often, and they don't need a whole lot of attention. Myth or fact, daddy long leg spiders are the most poisonous spiders, but their fangs are too short to bite humans. This is a myth and a popular one. First, it's not a spider, but it's a close relative. It only has one body part while spiders have two, and it doesn't actually have any venom at all. Myth or fact, we eat an average of eight spiders per year <laughs> in our sleep. This is also a myth. It is unlikely that we even eat one spider in our entire lifetime. <laughs> we're huge creatures, and spiders are hardly ever found in our bed, and we're breathing in and out most of the time. So what should you do if you see a spider and are feeling a bit nervous? Here's my advice. Don't panic. Only the black widow is potentially harmful to us. Remember that they rarely bite unless threatened. They are blamed for bites when they are rarely guilty. You could just let it be or relocate it. And you could have the spider identified if you're worried about it to learn more about its nature. Thank you. Thank you.